Hello, and welcome to EMC Unity video on Unity VSA, which is a software-based storage solution for general purpose servers running VMware ESXi Hypervisor. For this video, we will be going through a few topics, including a general overview of what Unity VSA entails and what's included in the product. Then we'll see the different deployment options for this storage appliance. After that, we'll check out the Unity VSA deployment specifications, including underlying server hardware requirements, before seeing the available licensing options. We'll end with a demonstration on deploying a Unity VSA on top of an ESXi host and using Unisphere to manage the storage appliance. Let's get started with the overview. Unity VSA stands for Unity Virtual Storage Appliance, which is a packaged virtual machine that emulates a storage system. Once a Unity VSA instance is running, it has the similar capabilities of a physical Unity system, like being able to provision and share out both block and file resources, including VBall storage. To manage a Unity VSA, the same HTML5 based Unisphere architecture is used, keeping the same consistent look and feel across all Unity products. Along with a similar provisioning feature set, Unity VSA also boasts similar data services like snapshot and native replication technologies. For Unity VSA deployments, there are several ways to deploy the VSA, allowing it to be very flexible in its use cases. Unity VSA data disks can be provisioned directly from the attached drives on the server it is installed on, or can use other attached storage from EMC arrays or any other storage arrays connected to the given ESXi server. And as you can see on the right, Unity VSA can also utilize storage from server SAN clustered environments. For deployment options, there are different capacity points available with associated support models. First, there is the free edition of Unity VSA that can be downloaded from EMC.com and is limited to 4 terabytes of capacity. This free edition is only community supported, meaning all issues can be posted to EMC Community Forum for help and troubleshooting, but not associated with EMC service requests. EMC recommends this version for test dev use cases only. For fully EMC supported editions of Unity VSA, there are capacity point options of 10 terabytes, 25 terabytes, and 50 terabytes, which require a purchased subscription license. With these subscription additions, EMC support personnel will handle support cases to ensure issues are resolved in a timely manner. Users can use these professional additions for production use cases as needed. Here are the Unity VSA specifications, as well as the required server hardware specifications, to run a Unity VSA. A Unity VSA instance is a single virtualized storage processor, which utilizes two virtual CPUs, 12 gigabytes of memory, and 4 times 1 gigabit Ethernet or 10 gigabit Ethernet virtual network interfaces for network connectivity. Unity VSA supports iSCSI, NFS, and SMB for available storage protocols. For the physical server, the following requirements must be met. First, the CPU must be a dual-core 64-bit processor with the Intel Xeon E5 series chipset or better. Also, the SSE version of the CPU must be SSE 4.2 or better. In terms of memory, the host must physically have at least 16 gigabytes of memory if running VMware ESXi 5.5, or at least 18 gigabytes of memory if running VMware ESXi 6.0. Other requirements can be seen below, including the RAID controller and minimum operating system version requirements. As mentioned previously, the free community edition works up to 4 terabytes. If at some time later, an administrator wants to convert an already running free edition into a professional standard edition, they can do so by purchasing and installing a standard edition license in either 10 terabyte, 25 terabyte, or 50 terabyte one year subscription options. There are also capacity upgrade options to go from a lower capacity limit to a higher capacity limit. Note that this only extends the capacity limit itself and not the subscription time. In terms of licenses themselves, there will be warnings generated by Unity VSA to tell users when they are nearing the end of the license subscription period at varying times. Once the subscription expires, a license must be renewed in the same capacity point or larger. If a license is not renewed, users will not be able to provision new resources on their system, but will still be able to access existing resources as needed. Let's now get into a demonstration of deploying a Unity VSA instance through VMware vCenter, then taking a look at Unisphere for management. We'll be deploying our Unity VSA through vSphere web client. Once logged in, let's navigate to hosts and clusters. Here we are managing a couple ESXi 6.0 hosts with this vCenter. At this point, the OVA file has already been downloaded to our local drive and ready to be deployed. Also, our ESXi host has been checked to meet all the requirements. Let's right-click the second ESXi host and click Deploy OVF Template. 
In the Deploy OVF Template Wizard, we'll first browse and navigate to the Unity VSA OVA file that was downloaded previously and click Open. On the next step, accept any extra configuration options and click Next. Here you will choose the folder or data center you want to deploy the Unity VSA on. The following step asks you to choose the storage location for the Unity VSA. EMC recommends choosing the disk format of thick eager zeroed to ensure best possible performance. Data Store 1 is made from the local server disks in this case, but note that other attached data stores could be selected here as well. The next step of the wizard allows you to pick which virtual networks to use for management and data paths. The last setting to configure is the IP address to connect to and manage a Unity VSA. In this case, I'll set a static IPv4 address, including associated subnet and gateway information. Now that's complete, let's verify the settings we have chosen, choose to power it on after deployment, and click Finish. At that point, the Unity VSA deployment has begun. Time to completion will depend on several factors, including network speed and server workload. To tell when Unity VSA is fully booted, go to the details of the VM and check the status of the DNS name field. At that point, you will be able to log into Unisphere. Now let's log into Unisphere using the default credentials. Once logged in for the first time, you will be automatically shown the initial configuration wizard. Clicking next on the wizard, you will be first prompted to accept the user license agreement. After that, you'll be required to change the default password for both admin and service user accounts. The following page allows users to upload a license to use the available features of Unity VSA. In this case, I have a license downloaded previously and can now browse to the corresponding location to upload the file. Once that is done, you can use the rest of the wizard to configure other system settings and resources. For this demo, in the interest of time, we will now skip the rest of the wizard. In the main page of the Unisphere interface, you can see that it is laid out exactly the same as the interface for a physical Unity system. Starting off here in the dashboard page, we can see that the system is running healthy with no warnings or issues. Let's go to the system view page. First thing you will notice is that the model name is called Unity VSA, which is different than physical Unity models. Clicking on the enclosures tab, another difference can be seen for the graphical illustration of the system. Since Unity VSA is a virtual appliance, the graphic is not of a physical disk processor enclosure, but instead of a single virtual controller with available network interfaces, four of which are for data paths and one for management. Clicking on one of the ports displays more information about the interface, including link status and MAC address, which can be used to identify the corresponding network adapter in vSphere as needed. That concludes this demonstration. For additional information on Unity VSA and its available configurations, please see the Unity VSA white paper on EMC Online Support or on the EMC Info Hub as seen here.